Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to look at the substitution rule. So we're going to figure out how to find a family of antiderivatives for functions by reversing the chain rule. For finding an indefinite integral of a composite function in this video. And in the next video we'll talk about how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus and the evaluation theorem to evaluate a definite integral by using the substitution rule, by changing the limits of integration, and then also figure out the value of definite integrals for even and odd functions. So this video is going to be all about the substitution rule. This is one of the more important integration techniques that you'll need if you go on to Calculus 2 and beyond. So the idea is this. The fundamental theorem of calculus, it states that a definite integral where the function is continuous can be computed if you know the antiderivative of a function. So that's one very important key point is that you need to know the antiderivative of the integrand. We haven't talked about finding antiderivatives for functions that are not as recognizable as derivatives. So this is where reversing the chain rule comes in. We want to be able to find more general techniques on how to find antiderivatives. So here's how the substitution rule works. It's going to look very similar to the chain rule. We're going to let u denote the inside function, which is going to be g of x. It is a differentiable function. That doesn't seem like it's really important while we talk about antiderivatives, but g of x is going to be differentiable, meaning we can take the derivative of g. And the range is an interval i, where f of x is continuous on that interval. So an integral, indefinite integral, of f is the outside function, g of x is the inside function, and notice that the derivative of the inside function is part of the integrand, and the variable of integration is x. We're going to rewrite this as g of x is u, and g prime dx becomes du. So notice that the variable of integration is x, but when we change the variable to u with the substitution, we also have to change the variable of integration as well. We need to choose what the inside function is. So identify the inside function and call it u. The idea is that you want to choose u that will simplify the integrand. So in particular, choose a substitution so that when you select u, du is a factor in the integrand. Just like here, g prime of x appeared in the integrand, and that is absorbed in the du. Express the entire integral, so it was originally in terms of x, so express the entire integral in terms of u and du, so that this integrand f of u is a more recognizable integrand we can find the antiderivative of. So change all the terms that involve x and dx into terms that involve u and du, which is g prime of x dx. So after you complete the second step, then the entire integrand should be in terms of u's, and the variable of integration should also be u. So that you'll have an integral of f prime of u du, you find an antiderivative of the integrand, and then after you have the antiderivative, make sure you have the plus c, because these are indefinite integrals, replace all the u's with originally what we made the substitution for. So replace all the u's with g of x. So you'll have f of u, so f of g of x. And then again, remember the constant of integration. So just to summarize, the idea is that we are making g of x u, so that we have f of u, and that means we need to replace u equals g of x, and also take the derivative of g of x. When you take the derivative, you'll have du equals the derivative of g, so g prime of x, and then you'll also have dx, so that the g prime x dx is going to be replaced with du also. So for the remainder of this section, we're going to explore the substitution rule to find the general antiderivative for composite functions. So let's try example one. Evaluate the following indefinite integrals, and we're going to use the substitution method. So this might take a little bit of time to get used to, because we're going to be dealing with differentiation and integration. So 2x plus 6, 
to the seventh power is the integrand, and we are integrating with respect to x. So the first step, identify the substitution that we're going to make. So let u equal the inside function appears to be 2x plus 6. Then we also need to take the derivative of u. So the derivative of u with respect to x is 2. Or if you multiply both sides by the differential dx, you get du equals 2 dx, or 2 times dx. Now, remember that the original integral involved dx, so let's treat dx like it's a variable and solve for the differential. So du equals 2 dx means that dx is equal to the differential du divided by 2. So these are the steps that are going into the substitution rule. We are making a substitution for the inside function, but we also need to replace the variable of integration as well. So let's go back to the original integral and make all these substitutions now, which is the second step. So we are replacing the inside function to x plus 6 with a u to the seventh power, and then dx is being replaced with du over 2. So now notice that the integrand is a more noticeable integrand that we know how to find the antiderivative of. So take the 1 half, and you can factor it out of the integral. We know that from earlier. So we have the antiderivative of u to the seventh with respect to u. So one half times the antiderivative is u to the eighth divided by eight. And now we found the antiderivative, so plus c for the general antiderivative. So this gives us one sixteenth u to the eighth plus c. And now the last step is to always replace the original substitution, u, back in terms of x's. So this will be 1 16th times 2x plus 6, all to the 8th power, plus c. There is always a way to check your answer as well. If you take the derivative of your antiderivative, general antiderivative, you should get the original integrand. So number 2. Let's try the indefinite integral, 2x times e to the x squared subtract 1 power, and the variable of integration is dx. So what does it look like the u should be this time? Okay, think about this in terms of differentiation. You want to pick your u so that you can find the derivative very quickly. So u should be x squared minus 1, the exponent of the exponential function, so that when you take the derivative of u, du dx, you get 2x. Or, if you again multiply by the differential dx, the differential du is 2x times dx. Notice that 2x and dx appear in this integral. So now, let's solve for dx. du is equal to 2x dx. So if you divide both sides by 2x, you'll have dx is equal to du divided by 2x. All right, so this was all the scratch work we needed to find out this integral. So 2x e to the x squared minus 1 dx. This becomes the integral. We're not replacing 2x, so it stays. We're replacing the exponent with a u. So e to the u, and then dx becomes du over 2x. So now notice that the integrand has u and x's. Doesn't mean that you're necessarily wrong. Make sure that all the x terms do cancel out, though, and they do. 2x divided by 2x just gives you 1. So we have the integral of e to the u du. So the goal was we wanted to make a substitution so that the integrand is more recognizable so we can find the antiderivative. And we know how to find the antiderivative of e to the u is it is itself e to the u plus c. And now I'll go back and replace the u with e has x squared minus 1 plus c. Okay, let's try a third problem. Number three. This time it's the integral of x cubed cosine of x to the fourth plus 2 dx. So using our experience from the last two problems, what should be the u this time? It should be the inside function of the cosine. So x to the fourth plus 2 can be u because the derivative of u du dx gives us 4x cubed. 
or again du is equal to 4x cubed dx. Notice that the x cubed is remaining inside the integrand. That's important. We have an x cubed that we are going to use to cancel it out. So now solve for dx. You'll have du equals 4x cubed dx or dx is equal to du divided by 4x cubed. So now let's go back to the original integral and make the substitutions. Integral of x cubed cosine of x to the fourth plus 2 dx. This becomes, we are keeping the x cubed only because it will cancel out later, cosine of u and then dx is replaced with du divided by 4x cubed. So the x cubes cancel out, so there are no longer x's in the integrand, that's important. But notice there's a 1 fourth that's left over, that can be factored out of the integrand. So 1 fourth times the integral of cosine of u du. Now what's the antiderivative of cosine of u? Where the variable of integration is also u, it's sine of u. So 1 fourth times sine of u plus c. And I'll go back and replace the u again as 1 fourth sine of x to the fourth plus 2 plus c. And that's the general antiderivative for x cubed times cosine of x to the fourth plus 2. Okay, let's try several more of these. Number 4. This time it's the integral of 2y to the fourth divided by y to the fifth plus 1 dy. So we're going to let u be the denominator this time because the derivative of u with respect to y is 5y to the fourth. So it's not identical to the numerator, but the key feature is y to the fourth, and it's in common with both the derivative of u and what's left over that we're not substituting for the u or that du is equal to 5y to the fourth dy. So now again, solve for dy. So du is equal to 5y to the fourth dy, which gives us that dy is equal to du divided by 5y to the fourth. Okay, the integral was 2y to the fourth divided by y to the fifth plus 1 dy. Well, we're not replacing the numerator, so 2y to the 4th stays. The denominator is being replaced with a u, and then dy becomes du over 5y to the 4th. Well, notice that what we're not replacing y to the 4th, they cancel out. That's important. There's a 2 fifth that can be factored out, and you have the integral of 1 divided by u, where the variable of integration is u. So what's the antiderivative of 1 divided by u? It's the natural log, so 2 fifths times the natural log. Remember the absolute value around the natural log's argument. So natural log absolute value of u plus c. And now I'll go back and replace the u again. So it's 2 fifths, natural log absolute value, y to the fifth plus 1, and then plus c. This is the general antiderivative of this rational function. Number 5. This time it's 3x to the 4th plus 12x cubed plus 6 divided by x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th plus 10x plus 12 dx. So another rational function. So what do you think we should call u this time? The u should be the denominator because notice that if you take the derivative of x to the fifth, you have x to the fourth would be remaining. The derivative of x to the fourth gives you a cubic term, x cubed. The derivative of an x to the first power is just a constant, and the derivative of a constant is zero. So let's try the denominator and see what happens. Well, let's take the derivative of u. The derivative of u would be 5x to the 4th plus 20x cubed plus 10. And notice that there's a 5 in common with all the terms. So we have a 5 times x to the 4th plus 4x cubed 
plus 2. Or, if you multiply both sides by the differential dx, you'll have du is equal to 5 times x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2 dx. So again, the next step is always to replace the differential dx by solving for dx when we, after we took the derivative of u. So du was equal to 5 times x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2 times dx. And if you divide both sides by 5 times this polynomial, you'll have du divided by 5 times x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2. So let's see what happens when we, if we make these substitutions. The original integral was this rational function. where the variable integration was x. Well, we are replacing the denominator as u, but we are keeping the numerator, which is 3x to the fourth plus 12x cubed plus 6. We are keeping it, but we're in hope that we will be able to cancel out this entire numerator. The denominator is u, and then dx, which is going to help us cancel out that numerator, is 5 times x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2 is in the denominator. So notice that the terms match up. You have an x to the fourth, you have an x cubed, and you have a constant. But there's a 3 in common that we haven't factored out from the numerator yet. So if you factor out a numerator of 3 and the 5 from the denominator, the integral will be x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2 divided by u times x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2 du. So the numerator and the denominator just happen to be identical, so they can be canceled out. So what we have is 3 fifths times the integral, 1 divided by u, du, again. So the antiderivative of 1 divided by u is natural log absolute value u plus c, because this is the general antiderivative. But now go back and replace the u. So natural log absolute value of x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth, plus 10x, plus 12, and then plus c. So this is the general antiderivative for the original rational function. All right, let's try number six. This time it's integral of 2x to the fourth divided by the square root of 8 subtract x to the fifth dx. So based on our experience from the previous problems, what do you think the u should be? You should choose u to be the inside of the radical, 8 subtract x to the fifth. You don't want to choose the entire denominator because then you would have a more difficult function to differentiate. Notice that if you take the u just as the inside of the radical, the derivative will give you a x to the fourth term. So let's see if this works out du dx would equal negative 5x to the fourth. The negative 5 is not important. We can, we've already noticed that we can factor that out. What's important is that the x to the fourth is what's remaining. And then du is equal to negative 5x to the fourth dx. So now, again, solve for the differential dx so that it can be replaced as well. du is equal to negative 5x to the fourth dx or dx is equal to du divided by negative 5x to the fourth. Okay, so that means the original integral was 2x to the fourth divided by the square root of 8 subtract x to the fifth dx. This becomes 2x to the fourth divided by the square root of u, and then dx becomes du divided by negative 5x to the fourth. The x to the fourths are gone, that's good. So that the integrand only involves u now. We know that you can factor out the coefficients, two and negative five. One divided by square root of u, and then du. So this antiderivative is not the natural log. The antiderivative needs to be found by using the reverse power rule. So let's rewrite the integrand as integral of u to the negative half du. 
So now reverse the power rule, add 1 to the exponent, and also divide by the new exponent. So you'll have u to the half, and then also divide by a half, plus c. So negative 2 fifths times reciprocal of the half is 2, u to the half plus c, and that's negative 4 fifths u to the half plus c. And then go back and replace the u. So negative 4 fifths. u was 8 subtract x to the fifth. That's to the 1 half power plus c. Let's try one more before we move on to something else that involves the substitution rule. So the indefinite integral, this time inverse cosine divided by square root 1 minus x squared and then dx. So this is similar to the last problem. You have a radical function in the denominator, but the numerator is an inverse trig function. So what should the u be? Keep in mind, the idea that behind choosing the u is that it will help you change the entire integrand to be in terms of u's. And the integration will not be in terms of x's anymore, it will be in terms of u. So let's choose u to be the inverse cosine function. Now that might not seem like an easy function to differentiate, but the derivative of u with respect to x turns out to be 1 divided by square root 1 minus x squared, which is almost identical to what we have remaining in the integrand. So du is equal to negative 1 divided by square root 1 minus x squared dx. So multiply both sides by dx, the differential. And now solve for dx. So du is equal to negative 1 divided by square root 1 minus x squared dx. Well, that means that dx is equal to negative square root 1 minus x squared du. So multiply both sides by square root of 1 minus x squared and also divide by negative 1. Okay, so now I'll go back to the original integral, inverse cosine of x divided by square root 1 minus x squared dx. We're replacing inverse cosine with a u. The denominator just stays for a moment because the dx is being replaced with the opposite of square root 1 minus x squared du. So the denominator cancels out, and you'll have a negative 1 remaining, which doesn't matter. You can just factor it out. So integral of u du. So this antiderivative is very simple to find. It's negative 1 half u squared plus c. And now I'll replace the u with inverse cosine again. So negative 1 half inverse cosine of x, and then you square the whole function, plus c. So this is how the substitution rule works. You want to make sure that you choose the u so that when you take the derivative, it helps you replace the dx and what's remaining in terms of u's and du's. So the idea behind the substitution rule is that you want to be able to replace a relatively complicated integral by a simpler integral so that you can find the antiderivative more quickly. So this can be accomplished by changing the original variable from x to a new variable u that is a function of x. However, some of the challenges involving the substitution rule is it may not always be straightforward what the appropriate substitution is. So we've did seven problems so far in the, involving the substitution rule. You need to choose the u to be some function in the integrand whose differential, du, also occurs, except for a constant factor. So we saw that a couple times in the last seven problems. There are some indefinite integrals, however, that will require a little bit more algebraic manipulation before you can use the substitution rule. So let's try those out in example two. We're going to do a couple of these. Number one, this is a very standard problem involving a little bit more algebraic manipulation. Integral of x times the square root 2x plus 1 dx. So let's try out this problem using the substitution rule. You can't do anything algebraically with it yet, 
let's try u to be the inside of the square root function. So 2x plus 1. Well, the derivative is relatively easy. That's good. That's a good sign that we chose the correct u. Which is, the derivative is just 2. Or du is equal to 2dx. So let's try to keep going the same way as we always have. Solve for dx. du is equal to 2dx. Or dx is equal to du divided by 2. So everything looks good so far. Let's try this out. Integral x square root 2x plus 1 dx. And then integral. We're replacing the square root of 2x plus 1 with a u. We're going to have x, then the square root of u, and then dx is replaced with du divided by 2. So this causes a new concern that we haven't seen in the previous seven problems. We didn't have an x in the denominator after we took the derivative to help us cancel out this x that we're not replacing. So this is where the additional algebraic manipulation comes in. Is there a way that we can make a substitution for the x so that it only involves u's? Well, let's go back to the original substitution. u equals 2x plus 1. Let's solve for x. So u equals 2x plus 1. We're still using the same substitution, but this time we get x equals u subtract 1 divided by 2. So now, replace x in the integrand with u minus 1 divided by 2. It's the same substitution, it's just we're replacing x individually this time. So it's the integral of u subtract 1 divided by 2 times the square root of u times du over 2. So you can factor out the 1 fourth. Integral u minus 1 times square root of u du. And now you can do a little bit of simplifying the integrand. But the integrand is important that it only involves u's. So you have a 1 fourth integral. Square root of u times u gives you u to the 3 halves power. And then subtract u to the 1 half power. U, square root of u times 1 du. So now the integrand is much simpler to integrate. You have a 1 fourth. And now find the integer of each term. Integer of u to the 3 halves is u to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves. Subtract. The integer of u to the half is u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves plus c for the constant of integration. Let's do a little bit of simplifying. So 1 fourth times the reciprocal of 5 halves is 2 fifths. u to the 5 halves minus the reciprocal of 3 halves is 2 thirds. u to the 3 halves plus c. Now you can distribute the 1 fourth through. And find the general antiderivative is 2 twentieths or 1 tenth. U was the original 2x plus 1 that we chose. It's raised to the 5 halves power. Subtract 1 fourth times 2 thirds gives you 2 twelfths or 1 sixth. And then again, U is replaced with 2x plus 1. This time it's to the 3 halves power. And again, do not forget about the constant of integration plus C. So that would be the general antiderivative for x times square root of 2x plus 1. So this gives you an idea that maybe your substitution looks like it's going to be working out fine, but you may not be able to cancel out all the terms, but your substitution can help you replace that additional term or additional x that was not replaced or canceled. So let's try out a similar problem in number 2. This time it's the integral of x divided by 1 plus x dx. So be very careful. The sum is in the denominator. You cannot divide this up into two fractions. It's not x divided by 1 and x divided by x. So let's make a substitution. Let's choose u to be the denominator. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll try a different substitution. So 1 plus x is going to be u. Then the derivative of u is 1 or du equals dx. So we don't have to solve for dx because it's already equal to du. So we have the integral x divided by 1 plus x dx. This becomes integral x divided by u. And then dx is replaced with du. So the same problem happens again. You have this extra x factor that does not cancel out or replaced. Not yet. So now go back to the original substitution. Solve for x. 
because you want to replace the x factor. So u equals 1 plus x. This gives us x is equal to u minus 1. So the numerator becomes u subtract 1 divided by u du. So now the variable of integration is u, and the integrand is completely in terms of u's. That's good. The substitution worked. So now notice that the denominator is only one term, and the numerator is two terms. This can be broken up into two fractions. So you have the integral of 1 subtract. 1 divided by u is the other fraction, du. So now we can find the integer of each term separately. The integer of 1 is u, because the variable integration is u, minus the integer of 1 over u is natural log, absolute value of u, plus c. And now go back and replace the u's. So u was 1 plus x, minus natural log, absolute value of 1 plus x, plus c. And you can drop that this, the parentheses. So 1 plus x, subtract natural log, absolute value, 1 plus x, plus c. That's the general antiderivative for this integrand. So this gives you another example on how to replace any factors that are, that are remaining using the original substitution. Okay, we're going to try one more type of problem involving the substitution rule in this first video. Sometimes you may have to use trigonometric identities to help you transform the integrals that you do not know how to find the antiderivative of. And then you can evaluate using the substitution rule. So keep in mind, there's only some antiderivatives that you can find that is involving trigonometric functions. You can find the antiderivative of sine or the antiderivative of cosine, the antiderivative of secant squared, the antiderivative of cosecant squared, and then the antiderivative of secant x tangent x and cosecant x cotangent x. Those are the only ones we've talked about that are basic antiderivatives. So in particular, you can find the integral of tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant by using an appropriate trigonometric identity and then using the substitution rule where the denominator is the u and then using some algebraic manipulation. So let's try example three. Find the following indefinite integrals involving trigonometric functions and we're going to use a trigonometric identity and then also the substitution rule. So number one, integral of tangent of x dx. This is a very simple integrand, just tangent of x, but it's not one that we have an antiderivative of that's very easily found. So let's make a substitution after we make a trigonometric identity. Tangent of x, the more, the more common one is sine of x divided by cosine of x to use. Now it becomes a fraction. Let's make the denominator the u. So let u be equal to cosine of x. Then du dx is equal to the opposite of the sine of x. Or du is equal to negative sine of x dx. So solve for dx. du is equal to negative sine of x dx which gives us that dx is equal to du divided by negative sine of x. Okay, so that's all the scratch work again using the substitution. Go back to the original integral, which is sine of x divided by cosine of x dx. The numerator is going to step, but we are replacing the denominator with a u, and the dx becomes du divided by negative sine of x. So the sine of x cancel out. So you have negative, so that can be factored out, 1 divided by u du. And we've seen this one a couple times already. The integer of 1 divided by u is natural log absolute value of u plus c. And now I'll replace the u with originally it was cosine of x. So opposite of natural log absolute value of cosine of x plus c. This is the general antiderivative of just tangent of x being in the integrand. Very similar formulas can be found for the other three trigonometric functions, cotangent, secant, and cosecant by themselves. Okay, number two. Let's try one more using a trigonometric substitution. This time we're going to look at what if the integrand is sine squared of x. So this one is not as straightforward as the last trigonometric identity, using tangent of x is sine divided by cosine. 
sine squared of x, you may have to look this identity up, it's 1 subtract cosine of 2x all divided by 2. So the integral is 1 subtract cosine of 2x all divided by 2 dx. So we just rewrote what the integrand was. Now let's try simplifying this into two separate fractions. Integral of 1 half and the other integral is cosine 2x divided by 2 dx, which we know that you can take the integral of each term separately. So 1 half dx minus integral of cosine 2x divided by 2, also dx. Notice that the first integral, that's no substitution is required. It's just the integer of 1 half, that's 1 half times x. But the second integral, you have a composite function, cosine of 2x, so that means you're going to have to use the substitution rule. So let's let u equal 2x, then du dx is equal to just 2, or du is equal to 2 dx. So again, solve for dx. So if you solve for dx, you'll have d equals 2 dx implies that dx is equal to du divided by 2. So now let's go back up to the integrals. We have the integral of 1 half. That does not require substitution. The other integral, you can factor out the half. The cosine of 2x is replaced with cosine of u. And then the dx is replaced with du divided by 2. So again, the 1 half can be factored out. So 1 half x is the antiderivative of the first integral, minus 1 fourth. And the antiderivative of cosine of u is sine of u plus c, now that we found the antiderivative. But now I'll go back and replace the u with 2x. So the general antiderivative would be 1 half x subtract 1 fourth sine of 2x plus c. So this gives you a couple examples on using trigonometric identities to simplify the integrand and then using the substitution rule. So this is a good place to stop. We talked about several different methods of using the substitution rule. If you have any questions about any of the examples involving the substitution rule, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And in the next video, we'll talk about using the substitution rule to evaluate definite integrals.